Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Ola Focus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a compact SUV from Honda, the 2019 BRV 1.5 SCVT, and a van from Toyota, the 2019 High Ace GL Grandia Tour. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we have the 2020 Lamborghini Urus STX and the 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Plus, a feature-to-feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the 2019 Toyota Rush and the 2018 Ford EcoSport. Together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the recently held 2020 Isuzu D-MAX LSA Media Drive to come again on our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review for the latest automobile models from Honda. The Honda BRV came in the market with a refreshed look and features and is now more fuel efficient and bolder. We have this week the iconic 7 seater in this car review. Watch this. What we have here is the Honda BRV 1.5 SCVT. The exterior of the new BRV exudes a masculine and premium look as it revolves around the grand concept of enhanced SUV image. Up front, the BRV showcases a new chrome front grille that is paired with a new front bumper. The daytime running lights and halogen headlights and fog lights further accentuate the front fascia. Over at the back, a newly designed rear bumper is provided to give it a stronger character. Completing the design of the BRV is the newly designed 16-inch alloy wheel, which contributes to its long wide stance for a more commanding road presence. Other exterior features of the BRV include power folding door mirrors with integrated side turn signals, 
and a new shark fin antenna that enhances its masculine and premium look. It's time to hop inside the BRV. The BRV offers a spacious and comfortable cabin that provides ample leg and headroom for the passengers to move conveniently during any drive. This variant retains the all-black interior. However, it has been improved and changed into dark steel. It also has the fabric material for the seats, which is still comfortable anyway. The dashboard remains simple and straightforward, with the buttons and controls positioned in convenient places. For the infotainment system, the 1.5S CVT variant is equipped with a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen display audio. For added convenience, the BRV is now equipped with a reverse camera. Let's talk about the powertrain of the new BRV. Under the hood of the 7-seater is a 1.5-liter IV tech engine that is capable of producing 120 PS of power and 145 Nm of torque. The engine is mated to Honda's Earth Dreams technology continuously variable transmission that delivers a smooth, refined, and fuel-efficient driving performance. When it comes to safety and security, the new BRV comes with Honda's G-Force Control Collision Safety Body that dissipates G-Forces in the event of a crash and disperses it away from the vehicle's occupants on impact. Moreover, standard on both variants are driver and front passenger SRS airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, hill start assist, vehicle stability assist, and speed sensing door auto lock. Additionally, catering to the needs of every Filipino family, the BRV comes with ISOFIX anchors to securely latch a child's seat, making the new BRV worthy of its 5-star ASEAN and CAP rating in the Adult Occupancy Protection category. That was all about the Honda BRV 1.5S CVT variant, a car that excites customers and car enthusiasts. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa akong marap sa anumang di nasa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, Bagyong Ondoy, papatrol kami sa Enlex nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nagdesisyon kami na sagapin at iligtas sila. Kami ang Enlex Esitex patrol crew, kaagapay at katuwag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay. Survival and Arms Expo is back with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. You can also apply for your license to own and possess firearms at the venue. 
The Expo will take place on November 14 to 17, 2019 at the SMX Convention Center, SM Mall of Asia, Pasay City. Admission is free. Pre-register online now. Welcome back to Auto Focus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. The 15th edition of the Autofocus People's Choice Awards, or AFPCA, was recently formally concluded as Sunshine Television held the awards night on October 16th at the ballroom of the Palms Country Club in Alabang, Muntinlupa City. This is something we've been doing for the last 15 years, been counting the Autofocus People's and Media's Choice Awards. You have 80-20% attribution and from there you work out a consolidated score across the five categories for standard and the four categories for uh, premium luxury uh, models. The Mitsubishi Expander took the 2019 Standard Automobile of the Year crown by a consolidated score of 3,368.8. The Expander also landed the Model of the Year in the MPV van classification for the first time. In the premium luxury category, the Top Automobile of the Year award went to the Toyota Alford van in runaway fashion. The Alford also came away as this year's premium luxury MPV or Van of the Year, following a previous streak of four consecutive Model of the Year wins from 2012 to 2015, making it an autofocus Model of the Year Hall of Famer. This year's AFPCA featured a unique scoring system that attributes 80% value to public votes from the July 1 to September 30 online poll and 20% to unit sales. Official sales volume data for the AFPCA was furnished by Stratcom Corporation with the official sanction of the Land Transportation Office are the 2019 AFPCA Models of the Year. During the same evening, the winners of the 2019-2020 Autofocus Media's Choice Awards, or the AFMCA, an equally important component of STV's Automobile Industry Merit Program, were also announced.
Toyota Motor Philippines has kicked off the Toyota Young Marketeers Challenge or the TYMC, which is a student competition that recognizes the most creative, innovative, and effective marketing campaigns for Toyota's flagship passenger car, the Toyota Vios. What we wanted to do is, of course, uh, for Toyota to have a venue for the best marketing minds and look into a real world of marketing scenario. And with that, we're quite pleased that 10 schools joined and that from what we've seen today, we're quite proud of our uh, marketing students and, and really they uh, did their best. Vios as a brand is a good platform for any marketing project. This being the best-selling vehicle in the Philippines and that vehicle itself has many facets. No? It's a favorite of most Filipinos, it caters to the young market, corporate fleet. It's good on road, good on track, and so it's a, it has a, a very wide, wide uh, profile. And so it's a good, again, a subject for any marketing project. The objective of this event or this activity is to have or showcase a learning experience for college and university students to give them a platform to learn marketing strategies by having an inter-school competition where each school will be represented by a group who will be tasked to create an integrated marketing campaign for the country's best-selling car, the Vios. To kick off the program, Toyota invited the students and their faculty advisors to an immersion tour with Toyota's brand and marketing experts. To get the student teams more familiar with the product, the immersion program started with a tour of Toyota's plant in Santa Rosa Laguna, where the Vios is being manufactured. The teams were also brought to Toyota's partner marketing and advertising agencies to learn from industry practitioners. Through this part of the immersion tour, they were able to see how campaign strategies are conceptualized and brought to life through different marketing channels. We considered, of course, the strategy, how, what was the story behind all the executions. We also considered creativity, how unique or how fresh the ideas were, the overall presentation itself. We all had a very hard time because all the presentations were very impressive, very detailed. We saw that they really put a lot of thought and work and effort into creating the marketing strategies. After weeks of developing the campaign, University of the Philippines Diliman team composed of William Alonzo, Samantha Ching, Anna Laurel, and Nathan Oranga was declared the grand champion, besting nine other colleges and universities that entered the finals round. Actually, I think everyone's still in shock, like we still don't know how to react. But of course, we're super excited for, of course, the trip and also how to spend the money that we were able to get. I think market research for this one, because in marketing cases, we're accustomed to studying query FMCGs like different brands na fast moving consumer goods but then for this one na it's a different market and also like a different category like we really had to study in depth like who, who we're talking to and who our target is. I think it's the, the strategy that we put into it because uh, that's really our main focus here aside from just the creative executions just from using um, advertising or marketing strategies to build the campaign we really put the strategy into it to make sure that everything that we're doing has an impact on the consumer and everything that we're doing is really not just a dump of all our ideas it's something that's that works together that bonds all together into one big cohesive marketing campaign that would bring um, more growth or more like higher impact to Toyota and its stakeholders. Second place was bagged by De La Salle University Manila, while De La Salle College of St. Benilde and Tipolo came in third. The winning teams received technology packages and cash grants for their schools. Team UP Diliman for being the grand champion also won a trip to Japan to visit Toyota's facilities in the brand's home country. Aside from these prizes, the winning team will also get a chance to have their winning campaign brought to life by Toyota for their marketing campaigns. I think uh, one of the biggest challenges was we had very similar insights sometimes or similar creative slants on what we wanted to do and of course that made us nervous thinking that the novelty of our campaign would dwindle because they've heard it already from the other teams but then I guess what we learned is we just really have to believe in what we have because it's in, in its core very different and very unique and very powerful so we just had to really believe in our campaign and we were able to communicate it best. best. Well, since we come from a marketing background, and um, even if we learn some basic concepts in class, it gets really different when you apply it to the competition, because you really have to think outside of the box, like, not everything you learn in the classroom, parang yun lang yung meron. So, uh, this is a really good opportunity to learn even more about, like, real industries and real-life uh, marketing concepts that you can apply. It's more of really expanding 
what you currently have. Because like in school, you learn the technicals, but then here, not just application, but then trying to expand it to something that can contribute more, like not just to the company, but also to society. According to Toyota, they launched TYMC to provide college and university students a learning opportunity beyond the classroom. The company also said through TYMC, they're giving students a platform to practice their marketing skills and knowledge by creating industry-ready campaigns for a product that young marketeers can develop fun ideas for. Um, we're looking forward to more schools participating because from the comments that I got from the participants, this is a very, very good learning experience from them. Parang it's preparing them for the real world. So I hope that more schools and more students participate in the future. Um, and for Toyota, of course, we look forward to hearing more fresh ideas from the students. Filipinas Auto Group Inc., the official distributor of Dongfeng commercial vehicles in the Philippines, has officially opened its first Dongfeng dealership in the country. Today we are having the first Dongfeng dealership that we are launching because actually this is a Tata dealership, but we decided to offer all the dealership of Tata a second brand which is the Dongfeng products that will complement the product range that we are now carrying including Tata. So the small vehicles will be for Tata but the medium size to the light and to the heavy duty trucks will all be Dongfeng. So today we started the first dealer launch and in the next few more weeks we will be launching the five more Dongfeng dealership before we go to the grand launch in March next year. Agrani Motors Inc., located along Ortigas Avenue Extension in Caeta Rizal, opens its doors for customers who are in need for light to heavy commercial vehicles. It has a very complete after-sales facilities which includes parts warehouse and pretty good volume of stocks from a complete range of the models. Yes, I'd like to invite uh, your uh, avid televiewers to please do come visit this dealership and its branch in Quezon City where you can see the actual trucks, you can test drive it, you can check the powertrain. It's really something that is worth looking for if you need a good trucks with unavoidable prices. Isuzu Philippines Corporation has officially turned over 17 modernized PUVs to Metro Valenzuela Transport Service Cooperative or Metroval TSC. The turnover was held formally at the parking grounds of Metroval TSC. Today, we are officially turned over 17 units of Isuzu PUVs to Metro Valenzuela Transport Service Cooperative, which will be operating at Valenzuela City. We are very honored to be providing them their first modern PUVs. The 17 modernized PUVs have been assembled using the Isuzu QKR77 platform with the rear body designed and manufactured by Almazor Motors Corp. They are all air-conditioned Class 2 PUVs with a side-facing seat configuration. The Isuzu QKR platform is assembled in the Philippines and is equipped with Euro 4 compliant 4J H1TC diesel engine that delivers excellent fuel economy. These PUVs are mounted on our very reliable Isuzu QKR Class 2 with body developed by one of the country's leading bodybuilders, Almazora Motors. Our promising PUVs aim to improve the transportation of communities and give them a handful of benefits such as safety and convenience. These PUVs are also environment-friendly as it complies with Euro 4 standard. Ang ating pong makabagong PUB na pinili nila ay compliant sa Philippine National Standards. Provided po siya ng malawang na upuan na kung saan po, kung saan ako nakaupo ngayon. Kaya po makaupo uh, ang 20 passenger. Pero tuwing rush hour, ang ating pong taas ng sasakyan is 1.75. Kaya kaya pa po makaupo ang maraming tao para uh, hindi sila mahuli uh, during rush hour. For Metroval PSC, a well-established transport entity in Valenzuela and its acquisition of Isuzu Modern PUVs will not only provide world-class transport to its riding public, but it also make possible for the cooperative to reap numerous after-sales advantages of IPC's vaunted PUVX program.
Volkswagen Philippines, in partnership with Green Cars Mindanao Corporation, has inaugurated the Volkswagen Cagende Auto Dealership. Hi, we're here for the uh, inauguration of uh, Volkswagen Cagayan de Oro. Volkswagen Cagayan de Oro will actually be the first dealership of Volkswagen in Mindanao. So we're very excited at this event. Uh, we like Cagayan de Oro because we think it's a gateway into Mindanao that will allow more Mindanaoans the opportunity to experience Volkswagen vehicles and the Volkswagen driving experience. Volkswagen CDO, Volkswagen Philippines' ninth since it first officially started operations in 2013, is the initial dealership established in Mindanao and targets the mobile markets of not just Cagayan de Oro, the country's 10th most populous city and Region 10's economic hub, but also the rest of northern Mindanao, including Misamis Occidental, Bukidnon, and Nanao del Norte. It's a full-service dealership, so the showroom will house all the available models of Volkswagen in the country, so Mindanaoans will have access to our entire product portfolio, consisting of the Lamando, which was uh, recently named the best value mid-size uh, sedan by the media in the Autofocus Awards, and then also the Santana GTS, the Santana sedan, and the La Vida sedans. And of course, any new products of Volkswagen that will be available in the Philippines in the future. Aside from the showroom, there's a complete service area so that of course our customers will be able to receive the after-sales support uh, that's needed. Volkswagen Philippines President Felipe Estrella said during the program noted that they are now present exactly where we want to be in the region. For all uh, the residents of Cagayan de Oro and uh, of course uh, the Mindanao region, we invite you to come and visit our first dealership here in Mindanao, Volkswagen Cagayan de Oro. Come check out our Volkswagen cars and of course test drive a Volkswagen vehicle so that you can experience what it's like to drive a Volkswagen. Prior to the event, JC Motors Philippines held a press conference in line with the car company's hosting of a planned tour in China to select members of the local motoring media. According to JAC, the trip aims to showcase the factory and the technology that the company has and to be able to relay this to the Philippine market. We're going to have a, to showcase the, the factory and the technology that Jack has so you can have an idea on how we build our vehicles and how good and high technology it is. So essentially, we just gave them the guidelines and what to look forward for for Jack. The objective essentially is to show the technology how good the cars are because uh, since Jack has been here, we haven't been able to bring the media to China. So we want to make sure and make everybody believe how good the vehicles are being built, the technology that we have, and the partnerships that we have with the different companies like Volkswagen and Cummins for the engines. So essentially, that's what we want to achieve here, to build the credibility of Jack as a company that can build quality vehicles. JAC highlighted the five different plans included in the said tour. Each plan represents JAC's initiatives to let the public know how credible their vehicles are. We're visiting five different plants in China. So we're showing where we build, we have the assembly line where the engines are built. And we're also showing where we build the electric cars where we have the body is 100% aluminum. So we're showcasing everything that we have in China to build the credibility of the brand and show how good our vehicles are. Furthermore, JAC Motor Philippines said that they will be launching two more vehicles in the country. Out of Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine, takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Motoring Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just a click away. 
designed to get back from any adventure. Every day without fail. I'm getting stronger. Being tough is not enough, so we keep testing. In the pursuit of ultimate toughness and reliability, the new Strata, engineered beyond tough. Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here said to head, our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category. Let's see these two new models from Ford and Toyota battle it out in terms of styling, safety features, and overall comfort. Watch this. Our first agenda in this week's head-to-head -head is the respective powertrains of our featured vehicles. The Rush is powered by a 1.5-liter dual VVTi gasoline engine that is capable of producing 104 PS of power and 136 Nm of torque. These figures are mated with a 4-speed automatic transmission. On the other hand, under the hood of the EcoSport is a 1-liter turbocharged inline-3 EcoBoost unit that gives out 123 horsepower and 117 Nm of torque. These numbers are coupled with a 6-speed automatic transmission. It's time for us to check out the exterior features of the two compact SUVs. For the Rush, its front fascia comes with LED headlights with integrated LED daytime running lights that complement the grille. Meanwhile, the EcoSport shows off these redesigned fog lights and headlights. At the sides, you will find these subtle curves that add emphasis to the EcoSport's body. Other recognizable exterior features of the EcoSport are these unique A pillars, which create curves at the bottom. What's next? We're stepping inside the Rush in the EcoSport. As you hop inside the Rush, you'll be greeted with a black interior that comes with silver accents and a few cream colored trims. For added convenience, the Rush offers tilt steering feature to move up the steering wheel position. Additionally, the smart start and stop button, air conditioning, double blower, and parking cameras are in the head unit. Moreover, the Rush is equipped with a 7-inch touchscreen that can connect to any smartphone via Bluetooth or a USB port. The audio control in the Rush, which is optimized by 8 speakers, is attached on the steering wheel so the driver could easily operate it with just one tap. Stepping inside the EcoBoost Titanium, you will be greeted by an all-black material. From the dashboard down to the seats, everything is wrapped in black leather. The cabin offers ample space for the driver and passengers. And there's even extra space for luggage if you need some. 
On top of that, there's a panoramic sunroof. The highlight of the EcoSports interior is the infotainment system, which comes available with an 8-inch SYNC 3 touchscreen integrated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Audio is courtesy of 7 speakers. Now when it comes to safety and security, both the Rush and the EcoSport offers reliable features. For the Rush, it is equipped with Toyota standard features, such as the anti-lock braking system with emergency brake signal, solid vehicle stability control, and 6 SRS airbags. Meanwhile, the EcoSport comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, stability control, ISOFIX, and 6 airbags. That was our head-to-head -head featuring the Toyota Rush and the Ford EcoSport. Two subcompact SUVs that one will surely make it hard for you to decide. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world, spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For your exciting viewing in this edition of our Automobile Electronic Magazine, we have the 2020 Lamborghini Urus SDX. Let's watch this. Lamborghini Squadra Corse looks ahead to the future with two world previews presented during the World Finals in Jerez de la Frontera. A teaser foreshadows the new 12-cylinder hypercar that will debut in 2020, while the Urus STX will take to a circuit for the first time, driven by 9-time motocross champion Tony Cairoli. Track only, but no races for the super sports car developed by Squadra Corse. Designed by the Centro Stile in Santa Gata Bolognese, it will be produced in a limited edition with aerodynamic and mechanical specification designed to bring out the best of the iconic 6.5-liter naturally aspirated V12 engine that delivers 830 horsepower. The event previews a number of particularities of the car, including the large rear wing, the air scoop on the roof, and the racing front hood with dual air intakes. The structure is composed of an aluminum front frame joined to the carbon fiber monocoque designed to guarantee the highest standards of safety. To house the engine, a steel roll cage was created that maximizes the torsional and bending stiffness characteristics. The six-speed sequential extract transmission has a structural load-bearing function with respect to the suspension compartment, the arms of which are directly connected to the gearbox, guaranteeing optimal kinematics and a significant improvement in the stiffness-to-weight ratio. The differential is an innovative mechanical self-locking type that allows the driver to adjust its preload dynamically to optimize drivability depending on the circuit and the conditions of the asphalt. On the racetrack but also off-track, the Urus SDX, the first super SUV in the world of racing, is equipped with a twin-turbo V8 engine and has a lighter structure. The front features a carbon fiber bonnet with supplementary air intakes and the rear is characterized by the carbon wing and the racing exhausts. NLEX Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break, get up, and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, Protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV-blocking sunglasses. And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrada restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, 
is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado Restaurant, only for the foodies. Survival and Arms Expo is back with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. You can also apply for your license to own and possess firearms at the venue. The Expo will take place on November 14 to 17, 2019 at the SMX Convention Center, SM Mall of Asia, Pasay City. Admission is free. Pre-register online now. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. Isuzu Philippines recently took the local motoring media to the island of Camiguin to see and experience its well-known and most featured spot on board the new D-MAX LSA pickup. Here's what went down. Watch this. Dubbed the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA Media Test Drive, the event gathered motoring scribes along with executives and officers and representatives from the Isuzu Pagyan de Oro dealership for a lifestyle tour to the island's well-known and most picturesque spots on board the new D-MAX LSA pickups. Coming in, the country's second smallest island province served as the perfect venue to showcase a diesel utility workforce such as the D-MAX LSA. To the roads and general terrain that coming in has, the LSA was able to showcase it's tough enough for anything functionality. We are here right now at the very beautiful island of Kamigin to test drive the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA, which is our latest addition to the premium pickup segment in the country. Kamigin has indeed shown that the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA is tough enough for anything. Oh, this hardworking vehicle does not just carry with it our lifestyle attitude. It performs that attitude and it performs excellently and reliably, which makes it rise above the rest of the pickup segment. We choose a, a province that uh, somehow reflects the new features of the UD Max. So it should be adventurous, very uh, remote, should uh, be able to provide a lot of surprises. So when we were discussing, so we, this, that's only one province that can actually reflect that and it was uh, the province of Kamigin. One of the new D-MAX LSA media test drives saw the participants take a 30-minute drive from the provincial capital, Mambajau, to Tagines Lagoon, followed by a sumptuous seafood lunch at the nearby GNA Fish Pen Resort and Restaurant. From there, a 40-minute drive to the island's interior brought the group to the Tres Marias Hill, a tree of domes dotting the island's most prominent geological feature, the towering and still active stratovolcano, Mount Kibokibok. A 10-minute drive on unpaved roads then led to the cold yet refreshing Kwasan Falls. We started yesterday. Uh, we boarded now a direct flight from Manila to Kamigin by a Skyjet. And then uh, immediately as soon as we arrived in Kamigin, we had the Samtus lunch of local favorites, seafood, crabs, shrimps, all uh, are coming from the seas around uh, Kamigin. And then we went on an adventure 
riding uh, two new, brand new D-Max LSA. We started with uh, a trip very near one of the 14 volcanoes. Uh, we were able to uh, position the D-Max very near Mount Hibok-Hibok. On the road to Mount Hibok is very, very tricky. It requires very good vehicles like the Isuzu D-Max LSA. And then from Mount Hibok-Hibok viewpoint, we proceeded to Tuasan Falls where everybody uh, enjoyed taking pictures. And then we proceeded after that to uh, Lansones uh, Plantation. Uh, Camiguin is, very no is known for to be the Lansones capital of the Philippines because of the very rich soil. They say that the sweetest Lansones comes from Camiguin. After the Lansones uh, Plantation, we went to uh, the ruins. This is the um, ruins of the church during the uh, 1870 eruption of the uh, another volcano, which they called the Old Volcan. We saw the ruins of the church, the convento, and even the bell tower. As some portions still submerged on uh, hard lava rocks. After that, we proceeded to our resort, the Paras Resort. We had our party last night, a uh, presentation, and we were graced by uh, the presence of the governor. Uh, he welcomed us, and the uh, governor is very kind. He provided the uh, lansones to everybody and uh, brought the dancers from uh, the, the Mambahao Na National High School as well as provided singers. <laughs> Day two of the trip saw the group spend the morning on the Powder White Sand Bar, a mere 15 minute speedboat ride on the clear blue Bohol Sea. Today we are already here at the sand bar, uh, in, uh, which some people call uh, White Island, and soon it will disappear by, by noon time. But uh, this is just the, probably the end of the adventure with the DMAX. Participants of the media test drive of the LSA doubled their enjoyment of the tour around Camiguin as the pickup provided the power, comfort, and confidence to take on the island province's various road conditions. We found a lot in common between Camiguin and the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA. Both are beautiful and rugged. Both offer lifestyle possibilities, from business to recreation. Both offer something irresistible and the adventure in all of us. It was personally amazed by the beautiful of coming in. The D-MAX LSA is powered by the powerful and fuel-efficient 3.0-liter four-cylinder inline blue power diesel engine with VJS turbo intercooler that generates 177 PS and 380 newton meters of torque. Available in the 4x2 and 4x4 MT and AT variants, the D-MAX LSA drive train consists of either the six-speed automatic transmission with sequential shift or the six-speed manual transmission with gear shift indicator. We decided to update and upgrade the D-MAX. So this is a very special variant because we know that uh, now the uh, use of the pickup is becoming more of a lifestyle. So for those that really enjoy going out on weekends, but that still uh, wants to use the pickup on weekdays or on their business, the D-MAX LSA is a, perfect, um, is a perfect vehicle for them. For its exterior, the D-MAX LSA is distinctive with the aggressive looking very dark gray radiator grille with engine hood garnish, front bumper guard, and one-step type black rear bumper, power folding side view mirrors in dark gray finish with LED integrated turn signal and LED rear combination lamp. The under rail bed liner, cargo extender, roof rail, fender lip type, over fender and side molding all come standard. To make it different from the current model, we decided to play with the accents. It's now F uh, mostly accented in uh, very dark gray and black. So um, from the grill to uh, the uh, garnish on the headlamp and fog lamp and everything else, and side view mirror, it's now in uh, very dark gray or black. But we have added some new features like the um, front over fender. We added um, some uh, over fender, uh, some uh, cargo extender and so on. Also, uh, we have added a, uh, a functioning uh, roof rail, so those that uh, would like to bring a lot of stuff, just add the uh, basket and then you can bring a lot more. Also, um, the tires has also been changed. It's now uh, 
changed into a Toyo tarp. Also, we have a, a brand new uh, finish for the alloy wheel. At the back, uh, the bumper has been changed into black. We are introducing a very new and more functional uh, rear camera. Inside, we have upgraded this uh, the audio system. So many, many features are now added on the D-Max LSA. The stylish and functional character of the D-Max LSA continues in the interior. The bucket seats with adjustable headdress, back pockets, and convenience hook for the first row, and the 60-40 split cushion second row seats with two adjustable headdress and center armrests are all wrapped in leather. For occupant comfort and convenience, the D-Max LSA is equipped with the auto climate control air conditioning system, passive entry push start stop system, 12 volt accessory socket, 3 USB charging ports, 15 storage compartments and 10 cup holders, and tow hooks for the front driver and passenger side, and one at the rear available for the LSA 4x4 variant. The D-Max LSA is equipped with numerous safety features, dual SRS airbags, child seat tethers for the second row, side door impact beams, anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, brake override system, hill start assist, hill descent control, child-proof rear door locks, and reverse camera. The group indeed had a blast putting the D-Max LSA the ultimate test while enjoying everything the McGinn has to offer. To all the tele viewers, especially those looking for a stylish yet functional vehicle, check out the new Isuzu D-Max LSA in any of the Isuzu dealerships nationwide and see for yourself its new features and discover its functionality and durability that is above anybody else. Thank you very much. We'd like to take this opportunity to invite your televiewers. Please visit our 43 dealership around the Philippines. The new Isuzu D-Max LSA is now on display. Talk to our SE, book a, a text drive. Maybe soon we'll be able to see you in uh, such beautiful destination like, like uh, Kamigin driving your D-Max LSA. Maraming salamat po. That was the new Isuzu D-MAX LSA Media Test Drive proving the power and capabilities of the new D-MAX LSA. And up next is another exciting feature in autos of the world. This time around the 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Let's watch this. The Toyota Tacoma, America's best-selling mid-size pickup for 13 years in a row, isn't stopping to admire its trophy case. Instead, it looks to keep its place atop the pecking order with new tech, style, comfort, and convenience features, making the 2020 Tacoma more compelling and more competitive than ever. The third-generation Tacoma, with a design inspired by Toyota's legendary desert race trucks, veritably defines the work-hard, play-hard ethos. Available in 32 different configurations, the 2020 Tacoma offers a model for all seasons and reasons. Six model grades include Work Ready, SR, High Style, High Value SR5, Athletic TRD Sport, Adventurous TRD Off-Road, Ultimate Off-Road TRD Pro, and Top of the Line Limited. In addition to the multimedia upgrade, the 2020 SR offers the added convenience of new intermittent windshield wipers in an available LED bed lamp. The SX upgrade package introduced for 2019 and returning for 2020 turns the SR Access cab into a high-value sport truck with stylish blackout features including grille, headlights surrounds, upper fenders, 16-inch alloy wheels, mirror caps, and door handles. When equipped with the optional V6 engine, the 2020 Tacoma SR5 grade is fitted with a 10-way power adjustable driver seat with 2-way power lumbar support. It also receives an updated dark gray wheel color for 2020. The Tacoma TRD models infused with ultimate capability by Toyota Racing Development feature extensive upgrades for 2020. For starters, the 2020 TRD Sport will get a host of updates, including a new front grille design, new 17-inch wheels, LED fog lamp and available LED DRL headlamp, a new chrome insert tail lamp, passenger smart key, and panoramic view monitors available on double cab models. TRD Sport also receives the larger 8-inch touchscreen and 10-way power adjustable seat found on all grades SR5 and up when equipped with the V6 engine. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam,
my passion, my blend of coffee, my inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here in Autofocus. We have our second car review this week. In this car review, we have a van that has become a staple in long road trips, simply for its capabilities to take every family to any adventure. It has improved a lot as well, given that the newest generation of the popular nameplate has arrived in the country. We're talking about the Toyota Hi-Ace GL Grandia Tour. See it here. Let's check out the exterior features of the High Ace GL Grandia Tour. Given the fact that the GL Grandia Tour has been revamped inside out, there are a number of changes and improvements that could be spotted here and there. For one at the literal forefront of the refreshed modern look is a new semi-bonnet design, which means that the engine is no longer mounted atop the front wheel axle. This also means that both driver and passenger can experience better ergonomics without the heat and vibration emanating underneath their seats. This results in better serviceability as the engine becomes easier to access compared to the predecessor. The GL Grandia Tour also has these bold but clean character lines that sweep through the van horizontally, creating a strong and stable image. For our variant here, the headlamps are complemented by vertical LED daytime running lights and fog lamps in the bumper, while chamfered rear combination lamps add to its three-dimensional presence. <laughs> to hop inside. A number of improvements have also been done with the interior of our featured vehicle. There is a noticeably bigger legroom, providing a riding experience enhanced by wider doorsteps, strategically positioned assist grips, and illuminated entry system. 
The plush headrests are making a comeback on the GL variants. 14 people can fit in here, making it the perfect van for long road trips. Let's talk about added convenience. The GL Grandia Tourist steering wheel comes in four-spoke urethane with chrome logo and is available with manual tilt and is telescopic adjustable. Other interior features include the electrochromatic with black monitor for the rearview mirror, urethane dash-mounted shift lever knob, among others. The GL Grandia Tour also comes equipped with a display audio with CD, DVD, MP3, FLAC with AUX, USB, Bluetooth, T-Link, and K2 technology. Under the hood of the GL Grandier Tourer is a new 1GD FTV 2.8 liter engine that is a high boost turbocharger that is capable of giving out 163 horsepower and 420 new meters of torque. It is equipped with an intercooler system, exhaust gas recirculation, and dual mass flywheel that leads to reduced cabin noise by absorbing engine vibrations. It also offers better handling with variable power steering, ladder gear shifting, and a McPherson strut front suspension system with leaf spring rear suspension. When it comes to safety, the GL Grandia Tour is loaded with advanced safety features that ensure nothing less. The transition from a cab over design to semi-bonnet additionally increases collision safety. Toyota is also the first manufacturer to include a center seat airbag on a utility van for its front center passengers. For a total of three supplemental restraint system airbags for the commuter deluxe and two SRS airbags for the GL Grandia and GL Grandia Tour variants. Moreover, the GL Grandia Tour variant comes with vehicle stability control. Hill start assist, anti-lock brake system, and emergency brake signals. That was all about the Toyota Hi-Ace GL Grandia Tour, continuing the legacy of its name. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're going to talk about the dreaded check engine light. What it is, what it means, and why you should not freak out. So you're driving normally, minding your own business, and then suddenly, BAM! The yellow light of death comes out, the dreaded check engine light. You start freaking out, don't know what to do. You start the car, you stop the car, you turn it on, and it's still there. Oh no, it's the end of the world, something's wrong with my car, my engine is busted. Relax, it's none of those things. Quite simply put, a check engine light simply means that one of the various sensors in the engine senses that something is wrong or is reading wrong. Almost all the sensors in the car measure voltage, is in electricity. It reads anywhere from 0 to 5 volts, and if that sensor is calibrated to read, say, only from 1.5 to 4 volts, then for some unknown reason, it becomes 4.1 volts, then the check engine light will come out. That's all it means. One of the sensors reads something wrong. Now, whether it reads something wrong because of a glitch or temporary condition, or because the sensor is failing, that you will have to find out. And no, you cannot find it out by going on Facebook. You cannot find out going on the internet asking, may check engine ako, ano yung problema? You ask 10 different people, you will get 100 different answers. And none of them will be correct. Especially the people say, oh, nagkaroon na ako niyan. Ito yung problema niyan. No, they are wrong. Do not believe them. Because there are 999 possibilities why that light comes out. The only way for you to find out what that means is if you either, one, have a scanner like this, or you bring it to the casa or the dealership and you have a bigger scanner like this. So now we'll show you what happens when you actually do bring your car in for scanning. First we'll take the regular 
shop grade scanner that we have here. This reads pretty fast. All scanners will actually have this port. It's a trapezoidal port. It's called an OBD port or onboard diagnostic port. Every car has this port. And it's always, always located somewhere here. It's standard that all car manufacturers agree to. So this will work for any car. This will tell you what the check engine means. There's always an error code that starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. You can actually type that into Google and then it will pretty much tell you what it means. So for this Honda City, we actually have a check engine and we're gonna plug this in right now. So we have it plugged in. It's actually here on the corner. You turn the engine on. On, not start. And we wait for it to fire up because it was now gonna talk to the engine ECU and pull out the error code and see what it means. This is what we mean by the error code. It starts with the letter P, followed by three numbers. On our particular scanner, it actually tells you what component is the problem. So this one here is mass or volume airflow circuit low. It might be an intermittent lean condition, it might be an intermittent voltage condition, or it might be that your mass airflow sensor is over 10 years old and it's dead and it's dying. At least it narrows it down to any of the 999 possibilities because it could either be mass airflow sensor, misfire, crank sensor, ABS, oxygen sensor 1, oxygen sensor 2, fuel tank evaporator sensor, the list goes on and on and on. So without this, you won't be able to say for certainty what is wrong with the engine or actually what sensor and what component is wrong with the engine without this. The first thing that shops will do is, oh, that's it? Okay, we just hit the race. So we performed the scan test again, as you can see, the message says no powertrain, trouble codes, there's no more, 9 out of 10 times, this will work and check engine is gone. So we unplug the scanner and then that's it, you can go on your merry way. But the bigger question is, will that check engine light return? Possibly yes, like I said, it's caused by one of the sensors not reading correctly. So why it didn't read correctly, we can only speculate, but the two most common reasons are one, external factors, it just, something just goes wrong. Electronics do that sometimes. Or it might be a symptom of that that particular sensor is on its way to being dead. So it reads wrong now, it reads fine. In the future, it might read wrong again. If it gets too severe, and if you do the erase procedure and it does not erase, that means that the sensor is busted and it's time for replacement. Now, what causes check engine lights? Oftentimes, you'll read on the internet and in the groups, masama langismo. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Masama yung gasolina mo. Possibly, yes. Because there is such an engine code called cylinder misfire detected. That is caused by bad batch of gas. Whether your 98 octane is not really 98, or me two weeks of gasolina, you don't know. Can it be caused by faulty spark plugs? Yes, it can also. Can it be caused by me not using the car for three years? Possible, because that particular sensor could be busted and rusted. Particularly, let's say, crank shaft position sensors. These things have a magnet inside them. And the engine gets hot, it gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. The magnet eventually becomes less magnetic. That will also cause a check engine. So like I said, you cannot find out for certain without one of these things. Now, actually, if you go to Lazada, you just type OBD scanner, you will find a lot for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 900 bucks. You can actually just buy one of those and it will work on your car. Just for you to be able to narrow it down. And if you do bring your car to the shop, Make sure that once you scan it, you take a picture of this, show it to the shop so they won't be punching in the dark and asking a lot of questions and basically guessing why. That will be a big help. And if the check engine light doesn't go away and then if there's something wrong, you only need one of these things. Professional level vehicle diagnostic scanner. This you cannot buy in Lazada anymore. <laughs>there you have it why you should not freak out if your car suddenly has a check engine light it's not the end of the world so hopefully now you understand a little bit more better on why it happens and how to get rid of it and that's auto focus this week on behalf of my dad butch gamboa we hope you have found this edition of your automobile electronic magazine informative as well as entertaining 
You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until the next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa.